So far, we've only discussed quantum systems with one qubit, but it turns out that we already have all the tools that we need to introduce what are known as separable quantum systems. So these are systems that consist of more than one qubit, but where these qubits don't interact with each other. So let's take a look at an example. So if we have, for example, a qubit, let's call it Q1, and we apply an X gate, and then another qubit, let's call it Q0, to which we apply a Hadamard gate. Well, the way we describe the state of this total system is by using the tensor product, just like we did with classical systems and with probabilistic systems. So for example, here at T0, if we assume that these two qubits are initialized at zero, what we would have is state zero, tensor zero, and this will be for our state Q1, Q0, right? Which as we know, is a column vector one, zero, zero, zero. And then since these two systems don't interact with each other, well, at T1, we can just basically represent this as Q1, Q0, an X gate acting on the Q1 qubit and a Hadamard gate acting on the Q0 qubit. And we can do one of two things. We can individually apply the gate to each of these vectors and then take the tensor product. So let's, let's go ahead and do that. So we know the X gate is 0, 1, 1, 0, and then state 0 is 1, 0, and then tensored with the Hadamard gate, which is 1 over root 2, 1, 1, 1, minus 1, and then state 0. And this, as we know, will give us state one, and then tensored with, if we multiply the Hadamard gate with state zero, we know we get state plus, which is one over root two, one, one. And then if we perform this tensor product, we get one over root two of zero times the vector one, one, and then one times the vector one, one. So that gives us one over root two, zero, zero, one, one. Now, similarly, we could have done X tensored the Hadamard gate, and then this whole unitary acting on state zero, zero. And this should give us the exact same result. So two ways in which we can analyze the circuit is we can find the total unitary by taking the tensor product of the individual gates acting on the qubits, or we can evolve each individual qubit and then take the tensor product at the output. And if you recall, this is very similar to what we did with probabilistic systems. Now, another thing we should uh, get very comfortable with is uh, not only working on the column vector representation, but also in bracket notation. So we could have equally done Q1, Q0 is equal to, let's copy this and put it down here and say, well, this is ket1 tensored ket plus, which is one tensored one over root two, zero plus one which is also equal to one over root two. And then here we group inside the cats, uh, all of the qubits we have. So we distribute this one into the summation of our superposition state. So we get one zero plus one one. So it's fairly common to also write our states grouped in this way. Now, an important thing to note here is that for single qubits, we have started representing every state as linear combinations of our states uh, zero and one. Well, when we go to multiple qubits, every possible state can be expressed as a linear combination of tensor products of zero and one. So this upper script here denotes that we will perform the tensor product of these two elements n times. So for example, in the case of n equal to two, we will have the set of possible states, zero tensor zero, zero tensored one, one tensored zero, and one tensored one, which as you know, we also write using this shorter notation, zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one, one. And then for three qubits, for example, every state could be represented as linear combinations of zero, 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 one, all the way to one, one, one. So let's take a look at an example using Qiskit, where we put three qubits in an equal superposition. So let's import the quantum circuit class and the state vector class. Let's create a quantum circuit with three qubits. 
let's apply a Hadamard gate to all three qubits. And we can do this by this function to apply a Hadamard gate and passing a list of the qubits where we want to apply it. So we want to apply it to qubit two, one and zero. Let's go ahead and draw that circuit. And then if we look at the state vector for that circuit, we see that we get an equal superposition of all possible combinations of three qubits. And the reason for this is because if we start with state 0, 0, 0 and apply Hallamar gates to each of these three qubits, well, what we end up with is with state plus, 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 which we can represent as 1 over root 2, 0 plus 1, and then that tensored with the same state twice, right? So this is going to be equal to a prefactor of 1 over root 2 to the third power. And then we can use the distributive law to apply the tensor product between each of the components of these three superposition states. So first we're going to get the zero Kronecker product with zero Kronecker product with zero. So we get zero, zero, zero plus then zero Kronecker product with zero Kronecker product with one. So zero, zero, one. And then we continue that all the way to one, one, one. And that's exactly what we got out of the simulation. Now, another reason why we call the systems separable is because, well, yes, we said that the qubits are not interacting with each other, but from a state vector standpoint, when a state is separable, it means that we can always factorize it into the separate states that represent each qubit. So let's take a look at an example. Let's say we have a state Q equal to one over two, zero, zero, minus zero, one, plus one, zero, minus one, one. If we start by, for example, factorizing this first zero here, we have zero tensored, and then we have a zero here for this zero, minus a one for this one, and then plus, we can now factorize this one, so we get one tensored, and then we again have zero minus one. And here we can see that this two are the same, so we can factorize this further. So we can do this equal to one half of zero for this one right here, plus one for this one right here, and then that tensored with these two states we're factorizing, so zero minus one. And here we could break this one half into equal parts so that we get normalized states for this tensor products. So we know that one over root two times one over root two is equal to a half. So here we can have one over root two, zero plus one tensored, one over root two, zero minus one, which is equal to the state plus tensored state minus. So here we have factorized this into an individual state for Q1, an individual state for Q0, which means this state is separable. The way we would construct this state is, for example, by taking a circuit where to Q1, we apply a Hadamard gate, which takes state zero to state plus, and then to Q0, we will first apply an X gate to turn it into state one, followed by a Hadamard gate to turn this into state minus. So here we see we have a circuit acting on two separate qubits that would generate this separate state. But starting from this state, it was not clear that this corresponded to two separable qubits. Now to give you an example of something that is not separable, we can have the state one over root two, zero, zero, plus one, one. And if you see here, there's no way we can take this zero and factorize it out of anything, right? Because these two components are all different from each other. And this is what we call an entangled state. Now you might be wondering, well, how do I generate this type of states? And what do they physically mean? I mean, when we have separate states, we can think of this as, you know, having some electron here and an electron down here. And as we've discussed before, these gates are like applying magnetic fields to rotate these electrons one way or another. So we're applying individual operations to these 
separate entities. So what does it mean for them to be entangled? So that will be the subject of the next video. Again, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.